Hey, I'm Tony Hawk. Welcome to Leipzig. You're watching Game Reactor Game Reactor TV. see uh, Matthijs uh, perform a jump there. Uh, jumping is something that we didn't have in Killzone 1 uh, because we felt we had to stay true to the, the realistic uh, warfare instead of uh, players hopping all over the place uh, while firing their weapons. We have implemented in, uh, in Killzone 2 except when you're jumping you can't actually fire your weapon uh, but it does allow you to navigate some smaller obstacles and to get to places you otherwise uh, couldn't get to. Uh, we're supporting fully uh, uh, full 7.1 surround sound, and this again this adds to the uh, to the immersion. What we're also doing is uh, we've got lots of uh, of lights in the level. Uh, we're using uh, our proprietary engine. Uh, I have to take this with me. Um, it says on top here deferred rendering. Um, this is uh, the technique that our engine uses to, um, to draw lots of dynamic lights that are all shadow casting. Uh, so you can see lots and lots of lights uh, in this level and what it does is uh, it makes every object and every um, character in the world, it makes it feel like it's part of that world. Because this casting shadow, it has an actual weight and, uh, and it's really uh, integrated into, uh, into the environment. Now, if you look at the actual combat, uh, something that is uh, quite important to us, um, let me just tone that down a little bit. Uh, what's quite important to us uh, in a shooter is that uh, the thing that you're doing 70-80% of the time is shooting. And that has to be fun, that has to be rewarding. And uh, one of the things that we looked at is making sure that um, every bullet has an impact in, that, in the world. It's not just uh, the environment that you can destroy and take down where you can see your bullets doing, doing damage, but we also want uh, something um, that the characters can respond to. So what we've implemented there is a system we call the, uh, the hit response system. And hit response system, what that basically does is um, it blends motion captured animation uh, with physics impulses. So based on where you, uh, where you hit an enemy, and with what weapon you hit an enemy, uh, you will see different animations triggered and it will always look different. Uh, so there's, um, there's a lot of satisfaction to be had by just firing at your enemies because you can always see them behave in different, in different ways. Um, to give you an example, if we've, trigger, if we've uh, motion captured uh, one of the guys to have his right arm flailing because he's hit in the right arm, uh, with the physics impulse, if we blend that, depending on the angle, depending on the strength of the impact, we can make that move more exaggerated or more subtle, basically. So there's, there's different ways to, uh, to go about that. And again, that adds to a lot of variety and a lot of satisfaction for, uh, for the player. Of course, with such uh, a destructible world and uh, lots of physics objects uh, flying around, um, We've also had, uh, had a good look at our AI. AI is something that we've uh, considerably improved in, uh, in Liberation already, where they were uh, a lot more aware of their environment. They could shoot at barrels, they could uh, uh, display flanking behavior, things like that. Uh, we've taken it a couple of steps further with, uh, with uh, Killzone 2. Um, now they also have to navigate the, the physics objects. They have to be aware of cover that can be destroyed, uh, both cover that you're behind as a player or their cover, they will move out of the way. Um, and they will display uh, behavior that is in line with uh, what are your buddies doing, uh, how much resistance is there, should we retreat, should we attack, those kind of things are, uh, are implemented as well. Our hit response system also um, helps uh, with the actual gameplay in terms of uh, using that, uh, that system uh, to your advantage. Uh, in this case, um, we've got uh, a mini-boss here, 
Uh, bosses are something we also carried over from Kills on Liberation. So you'll see more bosses uh, appear. We actually killed them quite quickly there, thank you. Um, let me just uh, cheat there. And if you do it again, oh, you've got the <laughs> checkpoint. You're cheeky. Could you tell us something more about the heavy soldier? The heavy soldier is, um, uh, is heavily armored at the front, uh, which means that uh, if you attack him head on, uh, you won't do any damage and he'll just keep coming at you. He's got a really big uh, uh, rail gun, uh, so he's, he's, you basically have to run for cover. Uh, if you're behind cover and he can't get to you, he's got uh, uh, also the ability to, uh, uh, to fire a grenade. So you see his little smoke trail coming towards you and you hear this beeping sound, uh, you have to start running. Um, so in order to, uh, to kill him, he's got a vulnerable spot at his back where his, uh, his gas uh, cylinders are. So you either have to flank him, have your buddies flank him, or you can use the hit response system. And with the hit responses, you can basically fire at, uh, at his head, disorient him that way, He'll turn around and you can actually uh, fire uh, this exposed back uh, at that point. So that's where we start introducing things uh, like the hit responses into the, uh, into the actual gameplay. How, How much, much time? time did you spend to, uh, designing the weapons and the reload um, Weapons, uh, obviously in a shooter, are very important. That we have different classes of weapons. Uh, so the weapons all have to uh, accommodate a different style of play. We have weapons that are better at longer range, better at shorter range. Uh, that's always a matter of balancing. Actually coming up with different classes of weapon, that's quite easy. But then to implement them and to balance them in a way that it fits the player styles. If you look at the weapon that Matthijs is holding now, that's uh, a light machine gun. Now that's much more suited for shorter range and more run and gun type gameplay. Uh, the M82 is more for mid range and then there's a sniper rifle, a rocket launcher, uh, etc. So uh, a lot of time goes into making sure that those, uh, that those weapons are balanced right. And then there's the whole handling of the weapons. And they have to, I mean, everything we do in Killzone is recognizable, yet it's on another planet. It's got a little bit of sci-fi touch to it, but it's not shooting laser beams or anything. It's all grounded in reality. So our weapons are also grounded in reality. We, we take existing models, we look at what developments are there, and we try to implement that here. And that also means coming up with alternative reload animations because these weapons don't exist. So there's a lot of uh, conceptualization and also actual work that has to go into these weapons.